Hello friends, welcome back. I'm Marta Perez, I'm an OBGYN doctor, and you are on my channel. Today's episode is on genetic testing and pregnancy. It's a really big topic and I'm dividing it up into two episodes. On this episode, we'll cover background and we'll cover carrier genetic screening. And on the following episode, we'll cover aneuploidy screening, which is the genetic screening that you typically get during the first trimester of pregnancy. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos and updates and let's get started. When I'm doing this, you're gonna see me look down a little bit at my notes because this is a complicated topic. I thought really closely about how I wanna explain things and sort of written that out, so you might see me do that. In addition, this is just gonna be a quick video. All questions that you may have about your genetics, genetic screening and counseling, you should ask your physician. And there are whole professionals called genetic counselors. They have advanced degrees in genetics. They are wonderful resources to learn more about genetics, genetic inheritance, whether that is about reproduction or not. Most OBGYNs and high-risk OB doctors work with genetic counselors and know how to refer them. Um, so if you have advanced level questions, they are the professionals that you would go to and you can get a referral from your doctor. Okay, a little bit of quick background about genetics. Each human being has 46 chromosomes and it's two copies of 23 chromosomes, okay? So they're in pairs. You inherit one group of 23 chromosomes from one parent and another group of 23 chromosomes from another parent making 46 chromosomes you as a unique individual. There are a variety of ways that genetic problems can lead to problems with someone's health. I will not get into that. There are whole college courses, whole graduate courses on those types of things, but I wanna go over a few really common things. So one issue is that one individual gene can be at fault for a disease, and these can be inherited through families. Another thing that can happen is that sometimes instead of 46 chromosomes, someone might have one extra chromosome or one less chromosome. Those problems typically arise as a new problem because a sperm and an egg meet and there's a problem there. Those are the types of genetic problems, the new ones that could come up in a fetus or a future child that we'll talk about next time. We're going to talk about now the kind of individual genetic problems that can be passed down in families. So as you may remember, when someone has an illness associated with a genetic abnormality, that genetic abnormality may be inherited in a dominant fashion or inherited in a genetically recessive way. You remember those Punnett squares you probably learned in high school biology? Those show that if a parent has an autosomal dominant trait, then 50% of their offspring will have it. If someone has an autosomal recessive trait and they only have one of them, they are called a carrier. And that's because they carry the mutation, but because it's recessive and they have a healthy chromosome that doesn't have the genetic problem, they don't experience the health outcomes from the disease and they may not know they have it. The, that's how the term carrier screening comes about is because we're looking for these recessive genetic problems that someone may not know they have that if they reproduce with somebody who was also a carrier, then you remember that Punnett square, there's a 25% chance that their child could have both recessive genes and be affected by the disease. Now, I want to back up and say that's an overly simplistic view of genetic inheritance. There are a lot of complicating factors, like for example, some problems are linked to either the X or the Y gene, meaning that if it's X-linked, those who are XY would have a greater chance of having the disease than an XX. There's differences in penetrance, meaning someone may have the same mutation, but may have varying levels of the disease. So, you know, this is all to say, I'm trying to break this down in an easy to understand way, but just know that these things can be more complicated. So there are tons of genetic diseases out there. Some of them are really commonly talked about and known about, for example, sickle cell disease, cystic fibrosis is one example. Those are both autosomal recessive inheritance type of diseases. But there's also other genetic diseases that don't affect children. They may affect people when they become adults. We don't screen for every type of genetic illness out there. And that's because of a lot of complicated reasons. A lot of them have to do with 
privacy and ethical concerns, but just know that when we're talking about reproduction, specifically in carrier screening, we screen for diseases that have a near lethal or very serious health outcome for children, so childhood onset, and that are common enough in the population that screening is a reasonable and worthwhile endeavor. Because if something is super, super rare, when you screen a lot of people for it, you'll have false positives. I'm gonna run through an example of carrier screening first, and then I'll talk about more detail about what we screen for, who and when. So I'm gonna use cystic fibrosis as an example. Cystic fibrosis is a multi-organ disease that is most pronounced um, as a pulmonary disease of recurrent pneumonias, but also has GI disease and infertility in males. If you have cystic fibrosis, it's because you have two recessive genes for it. If you only have one recessive gene, you often don't have any symptoms at all and you would be called a carrier. So in order to have cystic fibrosis, you have to have inherited the recessive gene from both parents. So if you just have one copy, you're a carrier for CF, you don't have CF, and you may not know whether you're a carrier or not. This is why we recommend screening everybody because we can't just tease it out based on people who have a family history. Okay, so what diseases do we screen for with carrier screening? Okay, well, it depends on who you are. Every individual who is planning pregnancy or pregnant should qualify for screening for cystic fibrosis, CF, which we just talked about. Also something called spinal muscular atrophy or SMA, which is a nervous system and movement disorder of children. Problems with hemoglobin called hemoglobinopathy. This includes sickle cell disease, but also other types of problems with hemoglobin. Those are the ones that we recommend everyone have screening, screening for. Some people may qualify for extra genetic carrier screening. Those people are anyone who has a history or family history that is consistent with fragile X syndrome should have screening for fragile X. Symptoms of fragile X syndrome are often intellectual disability in a male family member or early menopause or ovarian insufficiency in the patient themselves or a close family member. And people of certain ethnicities or cultural backgrounds should get extra screening as well. Those who are of Ashkenazi Jewish heritage and French Canadian and Cajun should have screening for Tay-Sachs disease. And depending on some cultural and ethnic history, there is consideration for some expanded disease screening for certain populations. So that's something to discuss with your doctor or again, a genetic counselor. But everyone should have screening before or during pregnancy for cystic fibrosis, SMA, and hemoglobinopathies, and should be asked questions about whether they should get additional screening for both fragile X and Tay-Sachs disease. So who should be screened? The person supplying the egg should be screened first. If they're negative, nothing to do. If they're positive, then we, in conjunction with genetic counselors, will likely screen the person supplying the sperm, right? Because if one person is a carrier and the other person is not, then the likelihood of the disease is low in the offspring. The offspring might just be a carrier. But if the person supplying the sperm is also a carrier, then you're back to that Punnett square, that 25% chance that one of the offspring, offspring could be affected. And the reason that this is important is because there is something to do about it. So if a couple finds out, let's say they're a heterosexual cis couple, and she goes to the OBGYN for a preconception visit, and the OBGYN recommends preconception screening, she gets screened and finds out she's a carrier for CF. They then screen her partner. Her partner is also a carrier for CF. Then they have options resulting in their reproductive choices. For example, IVF may be an option for them and they may choose to do pre-implantation genetic testing to not use embryos that are affected with CF and only use embryos that are either unaffected by CF or carriers. Or instead of IVF themselves, they may choose to have donor either egg embryos or sperm and that are unaffected by CF. Additionally, if they go through the pregnancy or the testing isn't done prior to pregnancy but is found out during pregnancy, there can be diagnostic testing of the pregnancy and of the genetics of the fetus to find out if that fetus is affected or not and make decisions after that information is available. So like I mentioned a few times in this, the ideal time to have carrier screening done for the person supplying the egg 
is before conception. So this is part of a preconception visit. I don't see this talked about a lot when people are talking about preparing for pregnancy. It's important for people who have health problems, anticipated reproductive problems, or complicated family histories to go to a preconception visit to talk to their OBGYN about a whole range of things. But one of the things you can do at a preconception visit is this screening so that you can screen the person, get the results, and screen the partner and do genetic counseling and testing that's recommended before the pregnancy so that they can make those choices. However, a lot of people don't go to a preconception visit or maybe don't know about it, or unfortunately, maybe they weren't offered um, preconception genetic carrier screening at that visit. It can be done then early in pregnancy, like I usually did it at the first pregnancy visit. Now, these are genetic problems that are inherited down the family. So once someone has had this testing once, it does not need to be repeated in that person's lifetime. Finally, I just want to reiterate that genetics is a really, really complicated topic. Um, there are tons of complexities and subtleties that I simply won't get into just on this informational video and that I can't account for totally. In addition, not all screening tests are 100% accurate. So even a negative result for a carrier screening test, although it identifies most, it may not identify all because genes are so complex and the most common mutation that causes some carrier outcomes may not be the one that someone has. Um, so nothing is 100% like everything in life. And for a lot of people, there's additional or extra evaluation or examination that may be done, especially in consultation with a genetic counselor. Um, so all questions about this, please ask your OBGYN doctor, perhaps a high risk OB doctor or a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility doctor. All of them have contacts with our genetic counselor friends. Some of them have double training in genetics themselves too. And I hope that was informational. Again, next time we're going to talk about the type of genetic screening that is typically offered during the first trimester of pregnancy and is directed at the genetics of the fetus. This topic was directed at the genetics of the person supplying the egg for inherited diseases and especially the ones that we typically screen for. So I'd love to hear additional questions in the comments. If you missed me and you're a subscriber, I will be back. Give this video a like so I get some positive feedback. We all love that. And if you're new here, please hit subscribe so you don't miss that, miss that next video because I think that one's gonna be a really popular one. I'm Dr. Marta Perez. You are here on my channel, Prepare for Birth, where we talk about everything pregnancy and postpartum so that you can have an educated and empowered experience. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much.